the president of Radcliffe College. Mr. President, fellows of Harvard College, Mr. President and members of the Board of Overseers, I have the honor to present to you these women representing candidates for the first degree in arts or in science. The Dean of Harvard College. Mr. President and fellows of Harvard College, Mr. President and members of the Board of Overseers, as Dean of Harvard College, I have the honor to present to you these graduating men and women representing candidates for the first degree in arts or in sciences. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer on you the first degree in arts or in science and admit you to the fellowship of educated men and women. duties I have as co-master at Courier House is to welcome the senior class on this very important day and all of their families. I know that you, you've already had a great deal of speech of time this morning and over the past few days, so I'll be very brief. I think you all know that you are a very accomplished group of people, but we'd like to know that you've been a very special class for William and for me. We wish you every good thing, and we look forward to renewing our friendships at every opportunity. So, congratulations. Together, uh, for just a few more minutes uh, of these long ceremonies uh, that will bring this very special week to a close. Um, as someone who works as an historian, but especially an historian of religion, uh, in the couple of remarks that I want to make, I feel compelled to speak just a word about the ritual occasion uh, that we find ourselves in. There's been a lot of, of words, good and bad, spilled about ritual. Uh, but I think in many ways, uh, the ritual that you're going through today uh, as new graduates, as commencers, if you like, uh, is really a sort of microcosm of what your Harvard career has probably been. 
Uh, certainly both are rites of passage, I think. This is a formal one. The last four years, I have to presume, uh, have very likely been a rite de passage or a rite of passage of more substantial proportions. Uh, these rites of passages, those scholars, again, have spilt a lot of ink over, uh, but uh, among all those that have written about them, uh, several have talked about a few characteristics of these times of passage. And I would just like to share three or four of those with you, uh, because I think that this is a time when we can think a little bit about, it may be the last time you'll have for a while, uh, to think a little bit about uh, where you've come in the last four years uh, and what it might mean, and in fact, what today might mean. Uh, every rite of passage involves a separation, like almost every rite altogether, but rites of passage in particular, whether they're pilgrimages or four-year baccalaureate studies, uh, they involve a separation, a separation from your family for the first time seriously for most of you. Uh, they involve a going forth that is always a leave-taking. Uh, and this is simply one of those sort of bittersweet parts uh, of setting off to college uh, or setting out to be set apart by the gowns that you wear today as a part of the ceremonies here. They also involve a certain amount of struggle, what the Greeks call the agon uh, of human experience, suffering, if you like. Uh, I'm sure that's been more true the last four years than of today. We don't have the kind of heat we often do in June, so we've been blessed with perfect weather. Uh, and you haven't had to suffer so much today, but I expect the last four years have made up for that. Uh, sometimes uh, I like to think about uh, the four years of baccalaureate studies here uh, as being very similar to what Barbara says uh, of our mountain climbing, particularly uh, technical climbing. That is that it's, uh, it's uh, hours of tedium punctuated by moments of sheer terror. Uh, and whether those are the exams or whatever else, uh, I expect you've had enough of that. You also find yourselves, the, the specialists tell us, in a state of what they like to call liminality. It really just is a kind of in-betweenness, being on the lemon or the threshold. Uh, and today, you particularly are on this threshold, the very word commencement, talking about a new beginning just at the time when you think you're finishing something. Uh, and this liminality, uh, again, the scholars have pointed out, uh, is a special state that sets you apart from everyone else. It's often marked by special clothing in religious rituals, uh, in pilgrimage rituals, uh, as it is today. Uh, you're set apart in a kind of strangeness still today. Uh, and of course, what will come after that, we hope, uh, will be the integration that is also a characteristic uh, of religious rituals uh, and I think indeed of a college experience. But before the integration, there's one other thing, and that is the sense of communitas or the sense of community of being bonded together as a community outside of normal communities, outside the structures of your home communities or even of the Cambridge community to a large degree. And even though the wonderful thing about this group is that so many of you have gone out into those communities and been a part of the structures around you, you also as a group, and in a way we here at Courier House are a kind of isolated temporary community that is uh, in a sense behind, in an ivory tower, behind uh, ivied walls if you like, uh, and, and set apart. And this produces a certain kind of communitas that you will probably best recognize on your 25th reunion uh, or at later points in your life when you look back and still see these times together as a time when you made special bonds of friendship with this liminal group of peers in your class. And finally, back to integration. Integration is really what this is all about today, and it's what every ritual, I think, ultimately aims at for any, any group, any community that enters into a ritual. It's also, in a way, what I'd like to think a college education is all about. You come away, you are set apart, you go through strange struggles, difficulties, uh, you come out the other side, your families rejoin you here ritually, uh, but also, in a very real way, you go back into the world that you left for this very special moratorium period of time. Uh, and I think it's uh, one of the wonderful things about uh, having now for 21 years uh, been able as a faculty member here to look out at the graduating seniors every year, if not always here in Courier House than down in the yard, is to see that this is a group of people who have managed to integrate a number of things in their lives in the course of these four years and who in most cases go back to their families a very different person, yes, but also I hope people who are much more aware of 
how much your families have sacrificed and how much they have done to get you here and to make this day possible. And certainly this day is as much for all of you fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, grandparents, and all other relatives and friends who have supported these scholars here before me. It is as much for you as it is for them because this is a time of celebration, a celebration of the integration uh, of your kin, in this case, and your friends back into your family as a different person, a part of the fellowship of educated women and men, as the president puts it in the main ceremonies, uh, but certainly as a person that we hope you'll still recognize, but changed indeed. So now you move out from here, and the last thing I would like to say is really to take from this comment about the families and friends, uh, the fact that you are now moving as you receive diplomas here into the chain of educated women and men, if you like. You're taking up a place in a long tradition of education, but on the other hand, you're also taking up a place back in new communities or back in your own community. You're taking up places uh, that will be important to your family and to a wider community than the little circumscribed place here at Courier or here uh, in Harvard College. Uh, and one inevitably thinks of that vivid image that no one really knows where it first came from sometime back in the Middle Ages. Poets have paraphrased it. Many people have used it. But I would simply say to all of you, my friends, many of you, my students, all of you members of this house that I've come to know and to care about, uh, that I hope you recognize that if you go out bright and talented as you are, and if you see further as the uh, metaphor goes, it is because you are like dwarves standing on the shoulders of giants. And not only the giants of scholarship behind you, but also your families that have enabled you to move to this point, to stand up and perhaps to see further, because they have dreamed that you could see further than they would. And that's why I think this is such a special occasion. So welcome to everyone. We're very glad to have all of you here, not just the graduates. Uh, now let us commence with the commencement. I have the happy duty of being also the first introducer, so I come back with a, a different hat on. Uh, and that is to introduce one of your own, Brian Raymer. Uh, Brian will have to stumble to get out from the back rows back there. Uh, but when Brian comes forward, you'll see before you someone known to everyone uh, in the group here, uh, someone who has been not only a leader, because I think his leadership roles have been pointed out and people are aware of that, but also a follower. Uh, if one looks at the things Brian has done, whether it was uh, uh, first working on, in House Committee Affairs, where I first got to know Brian, uh, or whether working this year on that thankless job of being on the Senior Gift Committee, uh, or whatever he has done, uh, Brian has been willing to work for it. Uh, I don't suppose, I mean, I suppose you can just be a good leader and become the 120th Harvard football captain, uh, but I doubt you can also uh, be the leading team tackler uh, in a given year where the defense, frankly, had an awful lot of work to do. Uh, I doubt you can be the leading team tackler or the second all-time single season tackler that Harvard's ever had uh, without being a worker, without being an Indian as well as a chief. Uh, so uh, in, in, in my mind, uh, we, we can celebrate having Brian uh, to address us all uh, on all of these grounds. Uh, I think it's also significant uh, that this football defensive star is, is a fine arts major here and a man who is headed for architecture and he will be helped mightily along the way, I think, towards that by spending the next year uh, on a Henry Russell Shaw traveling fellowship where he will be following Le Corbusier's uh, trail of architecture and travel uh, through Europe. So, Brian, the podium is yours. Thank you, House Master Grams. That was a very nice introduction. Thank you. I'd like to thank the House Masters and all the tutors that we have here and all the staff that works in the dining hall and that works in the facilities and everything that the people that really keep Curry House going, and they, they mean a lot to us. And the thing when you think about Curry House, and the first thing they tell you when you get into Curry House is the day you get that letter and you say, God, I'm randomized, I'm in the Curry and you, you're, you're upset about that. First thing they say is, oh, the people are great. Oh, you'll love it up there. The people are great. Well, 
that's all we got up here is the people. And <laughs> <laughs> that's honestly what it is. It's a lot like when I, when I gave the, uh, the speech at the football banquet this year, I said the whole team was about the team. It's about the players that are there. It's just here. It's all about who we are. And it's about the people who are gathered here. And it's all the parents and the family who, who drove out here, or flew out here, or walked out here, or whatever they did, and, and came out here to join us. And it's, it's, it's weird to finally be up here. And, and Professor, Professor Graham, excuse me, asked me to do this about, I don't know, a month and a half ago or something. And typical Harvard fashion, I put it off until last night <laughs> to think about what I was there saying. Typical Harvard fashion, and no one woke me up this morning, and I didn't get to graduation until 9.30, but that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, I have a few things I'd like to say to the graduates and to the family and to, the, to everyone that's involved with Curry House, and I want to say what an honor it is to be up here in front of everybody. And you, can, you can hear I'm a little choked up, but I'm sorry about that. Uh, we were, when we came here, geez, four years ago, we came here in a whole different world. We didn't know what to expect. And we were all sitting there in the yard, and it, it, it was wonderful all being together. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. Like, the class of 94 really had a lot of spirit and a lot of character. And I think everyone here felt that. And you felt it freshman year when we all lived together and ate in union together and did everything like that. But when we all got randomized in the Curry House, because I know everyone got randomized, no one chose it. Uh, we came up here with high expectations, and we said, you know, what the hey, we're going to come up here and we're going to live here for three years. And I want to congratulate everyone who stuck it out for three years, who love this house as it is, and accept what the Harvard College fate has brought you to. It's funny that I was just thinking before, it's, you know, some people or everybody or whatever, you work your whole life, you work your whole high school to get to a place like Harvard. And then as soon as we stepped on campus, we worked our whole life not to come to Courier House. <laughs> Or, or Cabot House or North House or any of the quad houses. But I know everyone here, all my friends and everything, we love it up here. And it's, it's the people that make it special. It's not the shuttle buses or anything else. It's the people that make it special. And, I, and I'm happy about that. We also were told, I remember one of the first things I heard when I was a freshman, first of all, that it's almost impossible to get kicked out. I remember that. <laughs> the second thing I heard is that the real education at Harvard comes from the people. It doesn't come from the the lectures or the books or anything like that. It comes from the people here and the, our classmates, everyone we ran into over four years of time, the alumni, the faculty, everybody. And that's, I think, the memories we'll take forth with us. It's not going to be, we're not going to pick up our notebooks ever again. I mean, I know I won't. And we're not going to, I'm surprised I saved it. We're not going to do anything. The memories I have are the memories of people, of good times that we've had. And that's what Curry House, that's what Harvard College, that's what Radcliffe, that's what Harvard University, that's what the whole campus and the whole college life is about. And I thought it was, it's so beautiful today that like we're the last people introduced is at Harvard College after all the, the graduate schools and stuff because we're, we're the heart of the college. I'm mean, gonna tell you that again and again, but we saw it today. And we all know that four years ago we owned that yard and today we own the yard again. So that's really nice. But it's the people, like I said, who make Harvard a truly wonderful experience. And it's the people in here who we've spent three years with. And I wanted, it's, it's amazing that three years is up and four, excuse me, four years overall is up. But whether we know each other or not, whether we all like each other, who knows, but we're all together. And if I've never said a word to you, I apologize, but <laughs> not to be mean or anything like that. But we graduate together, and we graduate as a class of 94, and more importantly, we graduate as Curry Rights. And not many people get to have that. <laughs> so we're special in that regard. Uh, I don't want to stay up here too long, because God knows we've heard enough speeches this week. And uh, the last thing I'd like to say is, yesterday I went to the coop for the last time and charged up as much as I could with that bill that goes home to the parents all the time. And. Uh, and I picked up a book called The Harvard Book. I don't know if some of you have it. I think it was named for the first, same person who named The Breakfast Sandwich. <laughs> so The. <laughs> but uh, that was one one bad joke, sorry. But uh, I picked up a book, and there was, a, there was an article in there by the Reverend Peter Gomes, who, who spoke at the end of our commencement this morning. And there was something about commencement, and I thought it, it was kind of fitting. And maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe you'll think it's stupid. We'll see what happens. And he says, 
He says, that is why they call it commencement, for it's scarcely a conclusion and barely a beginning. But, it, but for better or worse, it is all that we have got. So is that the young go forth, the old return, the line continues, and we fall into place. Fearful, happy, arrogant, sad, sentimental, brave, uncertain, and yet confident, alone and yet together. And then he quotes a passage from T.S. Eliot. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And I think, sitting in the yard today, we all know the place for the first time. And I want to congratulate all the graduates, all the parents, all the tutors, all the masters, everything we have here, because it's a truly wonderful day, and I'm glad we could all share it together. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. It's a genuine pleasure and an honor, really, to introduce our next speaker. She's an East Asian concentrator and a fine arts concentrator. Her activities and her contributions are really too many to detail, but I'll mention just a few. For four years, she was in the Harvard Radcliffe Orchestra as violinist, social director, development director. At the same time, she served as DJ for rock for WHRB. She was assistant director for the Model UN and managed to find time to intern at the National Palace Museum in Taipei. She's planning to go on to a joint PhD JD program and she's our next speaker. She does it all with great good humor and very dry wit and enormous confidence. Rita Ho. Okay. Uh, I'm supposed to speak at the top microphone. I'm not tall enough to speak at the top microphone. Remember that scene with like Queen Elizabeth and she had the hat and all you could see was a little hat and the microphone, well that's me, so anyways. Um, I'm sure everyone is really tired of hearing speeches, so I'll try and keep this short and um, I actually don't have anything very deep and moralistic to say. I'm just, well, has anyone seen that movie with honors? Like, um, it's, I, I don't know if you guys know or don't know the plot, you must know the plot. It's like the Harvard senior guy who really wants to graduate summa, um, loses his thesis down a grade in Whitener where it's picked up by Joe Pesci and, hi grandpa, <laughs> and, and Joe Pesci shows him the meaning of life and the guy ends up dropping his thesis and graduating with no distinction, but it's okay because he's learned to love himself. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's kind of strange, and I, I noticed some very odd parallels with this movie and the piano, because there's like 88 pages in this script, and there's 88 keys on the keyboard, and I was like, well, it's like the piano meets love story if my thesis advisor wrote it. But, so, um, I'm just saying, um, I actually wrote a thesis too, and I don't think that the movie really expressed what it's really like to write a thesis, so I just thought I'd draw a few parallels here, so. Okay, so first of all, this movie starts off around Thanksgiving with um, this guy, he's like, oh, I finished my thesis, I'm gonna go meet with my advisor. He goes to his advisor's office, it's like, looks over the Charles, it's amazing, it's got this great view. I mean, when I went to go meet with my advisor, I think I looked at the firehouse, because he was in Sackler, so that's something over there. But, so then his advisor goes, if the rest of it is as good as the first chapter, you are certain to graduate with honors. Who is this advisor? Did anyone have an advisor like this? My advisor was not like this. My advisor was like, well, do you think you can rewrite chapter, uh, this page here and give it back to me? Are you sure you think you can write a thesis? I mean, it's a big job. I mean, are you sure you can handle it? I mean, I don't know anybody who's really lived that kind of Harvard experience anyways, and I don't see what the point is of making these movies that sort of condescend to us and try to make what we do less important because after a while, like this guy, sort of, he meets this homeless man, and like he drops it, he drops it down like a grain whitener, and it lands in this like boil room that looks like like Dante, and like, it has this huge fire and everything. I was like, I was like, well, you know, if you dropped a thesis down a grain and whitener, wouldn't you like just land in pusey? <laughs> but that's me. I'm here once again. But oh, I'm page. 
And I mean, how, how did that guy get in? How did a non-Harvard affiliate get into Wyoming in the first place? I mean, I can't even get in Hillis without like four forms of ID, nothing in my bag, and like a strip search. So I, I'm, well, not nonetheless, Simon somehow ends up with this guy's thesis. Simon is the homeless man, and Monty is the student. Somehow ends up with the thesis, and then it turns out that this man like shows him the meaning of life, and then it turns out that Simon has a terminal disease, much like Love Story. And so, so he, his last wish is that he can get, get to go meet his family before he dies of this terminal disease. You can tell he has a terminal disease because he makes that coughing noise that you only make when you die in a movie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, oh, you think he's going to die. So unfortunately, Monty decides that he wants to meet his family the day that the thesis is due. So, and Monty didn't finish his thesis because he went out partying the night before and then hooked up with a girl down the hall. You know, I, I, behavior I, all, I engaged in before my thesis was due, let me tell you. And I mean, I, I mean, the night before my thesis was due, I, my advisor called at 10 and he was like, do you think you can rewrite the introduction and the conclusion? I'll call you at 9 and wake you up if you want. I was like, thanks. And then my printer ran out of ink and I became very tense and it was not a very pleasant experience. And, this, movie, this guy in the movie, he's, you know, he's like in love with Moira Kelly, who is in that ice skating movie, uh, Cutting Edge. But it's like, she's, and, and so they, they're like, I mean, like, and I nearly like killed myself trying to put the thesis in the binder. Like, you know, have you ever seen those binders from the coop? Like, they, they go, snap. I nearly like cut my finger off. It was very sad. But like, I guess what my point is, after regaling you with the story of this movie, I hope nobody still wanted to see it. But, so I mean, I'm just saying, Monty didn't seem to really have the same sort of thesis senior year experience that I did. And I found it very, I found it sort of disturbing the way that they wanted to portray this senior year. I mean, I didn't see Monty going to like OCS and trying to like figure out what those black binders are. Does anyone know what those black binders are? If someone could tell me, I feel I feel very grateful. But I, I, I mean, and Monty's not flying off to like mid school interviews or trying to find a job or trying to get a fellowship or trying just to graduate, trying to find a date that's formal. I mean. <laughs> I mean, he, he's not really living the sort of Harvard life that I would want to live. And this guy is supposed to be the quintessential Harvard guy who doesn't really care, who, who learns that academics isn't everything and that you should learn to care more about your fellow man and all that stuff. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go care about your fellow man or that you should go out and kill people or anything like that. I would never advocate that. But, you know, I mean, I think it's important to remember that when we have these commencement ceremonies, filled with a sort of vague sort of, you know, carpe diem, seize the day, do something good, make sure you don't just stay in this ivory tower and go out and experience the real world. Like, I think it's kind of important to remember why we came here, too. I mean, the point with honors is that when it comes right down to it, you're going to have to make a choice between your brain and your heart. You can either write the thesis, get a summa, and not care about anyone, or you can go take this homeless man out and show him a good time, but not turn in your thesis. Well, it, it doesn't seem that easy to me. Sometimes I think the two are the same. It's, you can't really decide if you want to fulfill your potential or be a good human being. I think the whole point, I, I don't think you have to leave behind Harvard and intelligence and your thesis so you can become a good person. I think it's important to remember that when we graduate from here, we, we, the whole point of this place, of Harvard, is that the intellectual tools that they gave us are precisely the ones that we are going to have to use if we want to actually truly understand and help people and do all those great things that we've always been told to do. Like I think Michelle I said, like, well, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Uh, you just have to go out and help people, which is true. But I think we're going to have to realize that we're, we're going to have to use the things that we've all been told aren't important, aren't as important as going out and helping people, like our brains and our theses. And well, not that my thesis is going to help anyone, but. But I mean, I think you have, you have to realize that you have to use those intellectual tools to make it a better and more humane place. And I think it is incorrect to say that this type of training is useless and dehumanizing, that it makes you not care about people, that you are going to end up like taking this homeless man out. Like, if this homeless man is going to die in your house if you don't, if you write your thesis. When, on the contrary, that I think that sort of work is the reason why we came here and is the reason why we are the people that we are and that we are actually going to go out and do something good with our lives. I hope. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. Good luck, everyone. I hope that wasn't too long. <laughs>
for to uh, introduce to you uh, the person on the staff of this house, the academic here uh, who uh, really has the tough job at Courier House as the academic dean, the person that most of you know best here uh, from among the faculty at Harvard, uh, your Alston Burst senior tutor, uh, Deborah Foster. Which one? <laughs> Both. Uh, welcome, family members, and congratulations to the class of 94. You've done a great job. And just to add a few words to the statements that have been made about Courier House and quadding and all that, it's my belief that houses don't make people, people make houses. And you've certainly made Courier House a tremendous house. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> It is my privilege and pleasure now to read the names of those people who are receiving advanced degrees today. First and foremost, Heather Ann Hathaway, PhD in History of American Civilization. We're not gonna giggle. <laughs> Nigel Rossfels, PhD in history. them better known as Heather and Nigel. <laughs> next, next, Eric David Tang, a master's in biology. Now, as we move to the apex of our ceremony, uh, the, the awarding of the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences degree, we like to begin by recognizing uh, what I think is a signal part of what this house is. For all of the other things that we joke about, for all of the good fellowship that we have here, uh, at the core of what Courier has always been about is that it always contains uh, a serious percentage of uh, very serious and very talented scholars. And I think one way we can recognize the scholarship of this entire group uh, is by recognizing individually uh, those who graduate today with particular distinction. Uh, so it's on behalf of all of you uh, that I would like to ask uh, those to stand, as I called her name, just in place for the moment. Uh, so, and if you, everyone would hold your applause until uh, the end of the list, I would be grateful. I want first to ask those who will be graduate, graduating uh, magna cum laude with honors in field, with high honors in field, and they are Andrew Ross Acker, Peter B. Adler, Jason Russell Barrow, Shauna Lee Birnbaum, Iju Annie Chen, Leslie Ann Hakala, Rita Ann Nu Hull, Byung Soo Kim, Todd Soon Wei Kim, Rachel Daria Kleinberg, David Chisu Kung, Dennis Kai Ning Lin, Juliet Elizabeth McMains, Eric Ju Yi Pan, George H. Sun, Eric David Tang, Jonathan Matthew Weinberg, Roberton Capel Williams, Bonnie Maureen Wong Trakul, 
and Evan Ng Young. A round of applause, please. I'm proud to say that we have four other Magna graduates. These are Magna graduates with highest honors in field. Lara Friedenfels, Sina Jessica Lee, Kostin Popescu, who could not be with us today because he has returned to his home in Romania, and Shuang Kiao. Shuang. Thank you. And finally, I'm proud to introduce to you uh, the five summa cum laude graduates uh, in this class at Courier. Uh, the first of these is, in fact, the number one graduating senior at the top of his entire Harvard class uh, here this year, uh, David Ruxian Liu. Not at all very far behind are four more. Michael Lynn, <laughs> Ravendra Majetti, <laughs> and Eugene Amaru Mirabelli. <laughs> and Last but not least, Adam Sharif. Thank you, gentlemen. And now we come to the actual awarding of those sheepskins. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you, I think, know the drill. <laughs> Steve Campagna Pinto, assistant senior tutor, will be reading off the names. I'm very pleased and very proud to present to you the Courier House class of 1994. Amir Jabbar Ahmed Abdi, government. Congratulations. Andrew Ross Acker, Biochemical Sciences. Peter B. Adler, Environmental Studies. Del Ray Arvaio, Government. Peter David Asnes, Biology. <laughs> Charles Andrew Ballard, Economics. <laughs> Jason Russell Barrow, Economics. Shauna Lee Birnbaum, History and Science. <laughs> Torben Botts, Economics. <laughs> Joseph Martin Bradley, Economics.
Craig Lewis Briskin, Psychology. Matthew Murphy Camp, Government. Eric Chadworth Carter, Physical Science. He is not present today. Alice Ming Wai Chan, Economics. Joseph L. Chang, Economics. Sun Yun Chang, Psychology. Lorraine Shang Wei Chow, Linguistics. <laughs> Annie Chow Yan Chen, Biology. <laughs> Yiru Annie Chen, Economics and East Asian Studies. Congratulations. Corey I. Cheng, Physics. Adam D. Sharif, Psychology. Adaora Chinyelu Chikwendu, Biology. Mi Young Choi, Economics. Maryland to most of us. <laughs> Lawrence Rolf Christensen, Economics. <laughs> Rita Chi Jia Dai, Psychology. Congratulations. <laughs> Joy Luisa de Jesus, Literature. Miguel H. Del Toro, Government. <laughs> Philip James Doyle, Biology. Way to go, Mike. <laughs> Barbara Ann Espinoza, Women's Studies. <laughs> Stephanie Mareva Fayou. Mathematics. Congratulations. <laughs> Nina Ann Fiore, Fine Arts. <laughs> Ramon Flores, Government. <laughs> Lara Friedenfeld, Anthropology. Charles R. S. Gay, Government. <laughs> Enrico Anthony Giamarco, Anthropology. Yeah. Lindsay Nora Graham, Sociology. Edward Matthew Gubbins, Government. <laughs> Leslie Ann Hakala, Economics. <laughs> Rita Ann Know How. East Asian Studies and Fine Arts. Congratulations. Yes. Jonathan Adam Holland, Folklore and Mythology. <laughs> Rosalind Ball Horn, History. Thanks, Adam. Leslie. 
Helene Katz, English and American Literature and Language. <laughs> Byung Soo Kim, Social Studies. <laughs> Todd Sun Wai Kim, Biology. Congrats, <laughs> Rachel Daria Kleinberg, English and American Literature and Language. <laughs> Anissa Diane Knox, Government. Congrats. Diraj Kunchala, English and American Literature and Language. <laughs> David Chisu Kung, Economics. Sarah Ellen Curtin, Fine Arts. Paul Shik Lee, Economics. Sena Jessica Lee, Chemistry. Sunny H. Lee, Biology. Congratulations. Dennis Kai Ning Lin, Romance, Languages, and Literature. Michael Lin, Biochemical Sciences. Ian David Lithgow, English and American Literature and Language. <laughs> David Ruchian Liu, Chemistry. <laughs> Teresa Fan Long, Anthropology. Ravindra Majetti, Biochemical Sciences. <laughs> Bernard Arthur Mansavage, Engineering Sciences. <laughs> Timothy Paul Martin, Computer Science. Catherine Christine Mayer, Psychology. <laughs> Matthew George Mackay, Economics. <laughs> Juliet Elizabeth McMains, Women's Studies. Yeah, congratulations. Raymond Joseph Mertens, Government. Congratulations. Eugene Amaru Mirabelli, Physics. All right, congratulations. Sharon Elizabeth Murphy, Psychology. Sophia A. Nowakowski, History and Science. <laughs> Julie Emma Margaret Lydia Openshaw, Economics. <laughs> Eric Zhuin Yi Pan, Economics. Keith Edward Plaster, Economics. <laughs> Ka 
Faustine Radu Popescu, Physics. He's not, cannot be here today. Shuang Chiao, Chemistry. Brian David Raymer, Fine Arts. Congratulations. Venktesh Rudraputna Ramnath, Biochemical Sciences. Congratulations, Thank Brian. You. James Rodman Red III, Government. James Silver Richard, History. There you go, James. Stacy Rivers, Afro-American Studies. Congrats. Frank Daniel Rochon, English and American Literature and Language. Veronica Rosales, Government. Garth Aaron Rosengren, English and American Literature and Language. Congratulations. Matthew Thomas Rudder, Biology. Wayne Douglas Ryan, Government. Esther Suja Shao, Biochemical Sciences. Congratulations. Seth Adam Sherman, Government. John Smith, English and American Literature and Language. Eugene Sorolla, English and American Literature and Language. Derek John Stanley, Economics. George H. Sun, Economics. Eric David Tang, Biology. Congratulations, George. Way to go. Patricia Lynn Toro, Psychology. Patricia Yvonne Torres, English and American Literature and Language. Anthony Joseph Villani, Biology. <laughs> Matthew Stephen Wachowitz, Biology. Adam Douglas Ween, Economics. Jonathan Matthew Weinberg, Philosophy. Right. Scott Robert Wilcox, Government. Congratulations. Robertson Capel Williams, Economics. There you go, Scott. Congrats. Meredith Lynn Winnikoff, Biology. <laughs> Bonnie Maureen Wong Tracool, Economics. <laughs> Evan Eng Young, Social Studies.
Jordan Andrew Young, History and Literature. Andrew Jin Suk Yu, Physics and East Asian Studies. Please warmly welcome this newly minted Harvard College class of 1994 for Carrier House. It's all yours. I'll close our brief ceremonies today uh, with an old uh, Celtic blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. The sun shine warm upon your face. The rain falls soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Farewell. Thank you.